today we're checking out soloing over just one chord, C major. Now if you're not sure how to play the C major chord, go over and check out this link. And if you are unsure of any theory knowledge that I am sort of talking about, explaining about, head over to patdavidmusic.com and head to the Great One section and start from there guys. But otherwise we're just going to press on. So I'm going to show you four different ways of soloing just over one chord. So once you can play the C major chord, it's a great idea to learn how to solo over it. So how we're going to be soloing over it today is we're going to be soloing using a C major scale and sort of changing that a little bit around. We're going to be soloing over the relative minor pentatonic scale. We're going to be using arpeggios and then we're going to be using some blues and sort of colored notes. So four different examples there. I'll show you how to play it, what I'm doing, and then I'll show you a little solo. And then at the end, I'll just have this loop going so you guys can solo and practice as well. So the loop is just made from me playing, strumming a C major chord with my awesome TC Electronic Ditto Looper, and yeah, love this pedal, but let's just press on guys. So the first example guys, we're just going to play a C major scale, which sounds like this. Over the C major chord, here's what it sounds like. Don't worry, we'll be boring, but we are going to make it more interesting. simple but all of the notes work and they all sound great okay now how is this so well the reason is we've got a C major chord which has a 1 3 and a 5 right and the notes are C E and G how do we get there uh -huh. well we got there by making a C major scale nice and easy using tones and semitones T meaning two frets and S meaning a single fret or a tone and a semitone respectively right but if you think about it in two or single frets right you start on a C note which is your third fret on the fifth string. If you move up a tone, you've got D. Move up another tone, E. Semitone, F. Then another tone, you've got G. Another tone, A. Another tone, B. And a semitone, C. Right? So you can just play it on one string, and that's a great way to play the scale if you're just first learning it. That's really good, guys. So here's the C major scale, right? There's all the notes. There's no sharps or flats. Nice and easy. Now, if we just take out all the notes except for the 1, 3, 5, C, E, G, right? So those there are the important notes that are in that C major chord that you can hear in the background. You can hear this version. But it's the same chord, right? So C, D, and G. So now that you know what notes are going on, right? A great scale that will work over this chord is this C major scale because it's just got all of those notes. Now because there are so many notes in the C major scale, two octaves there, two of the scales, just repeated, right? So because there's so many notes, sometimes it can get a little bit boring for the listener if you're just playing. If you're just going up and down the scale, it can sound a little bit boring. So choosing, and this is where your musicality comes in, guys, choosing which notes you want to play over the chord in the background, that's where it's going to become really important and it's going to sound individual to you and it's going to sound interesting to the listener. So if you just had a chord going on and you just played it up and down the scale, up and back, up and back, day on day night, right? It's going to sound a little bit boring, but just choosing notes, just go through and play each note. Play the first note, the second note, the third note, the fourth and the fifth. So I'll show you how that sounds and then I'll show you how to play it. One of those notes held over the chord has a different tone and a different feel and a different effect. It might sound interesting to you or more interesting to me or it might sound different to our ears. It's very individual and that's what's really important guys. So here's how to play the C major scale. I'm going to show you two different octaves then I'm going to show you how to solo with it guys. So grab your guitars. So you want your second finger on the eighth fret of the sixth string. That's your C note, right? Then you want your pinky on the tenth fret there, same string. That's your D, so that's the one and two. Then you want to jump down and use your first finger on the seventh fret of the fifth string. That's your E. Right next to it with your second finger, that's your F. Your pinky is on the G note, which is the tenth fret on the fifth string. Jump down and you've got your first finger all the way there on the seventh fret, that's your A. Then you want your third finger on the ninth fret, that's your B. Then you want your pinky on the tenth, that's your C, that's your first octave. But 
But Solomon in this range can, you know, he can sort of get drowned out by the music and the bass. So let's continue from there. So pinky on the 10th fret, with the 4th string, that's your C. Jump down and use your 1st finger on the 7th fret, that's your D. 3rd finger on the 9th, that's your E. Right next to it, because there's no sharps or flats, right? There's F on the 10th fret there, the 3rd string. Jump down and use your 2nd finger on the 8th fret, right? That's your G. And then use your pinky on the 10th fret, that's your A. Jump down and use your first finger on the seventh fret, that's your B. And the final note is right next to it, the eighth fret on the first string, C. So that last octave. All together. One octave, second octave. So now you know how to play the scale, guys. I'm just going to put on the backing track and I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to play once all the way down through two octaves of the scale. And then what I'm going to show you is how it sounds if I just hold some notes, skip some notes in the scale, maybe play a couple notes a little bit quickly. Nothing special here, but you can just hear that it sounds quite musical. It's just nice and musical, nice and simple, just going through the scale and just leaving some notes out, playing some notes quickly, holding some notes, hearing how it sounds over the progression. That's what it's all about, guys. Your turn. Give it a go. scale guys we're going to play it's relative minor brother right we're going to play the a minor pentatonic okay now what's great about the scale is again all of here's the a minor pentatonic here's all the uh, the names there so all of those notes again they're in the c major scale and again all those notes are in the c major chord which is what you hear in the background right so you know already that these notes are going to work great now because it's a pentatonic scale right there's only five notes so unlike the major scale we're hitting everything, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? That's not happening in this particular scale. You are sort of leaving some notes out. So already, already just playing the scale in order is gonna sound really interesting and you're gonna come up with some catchy ideas purely just because the nature of the scale is you're leaving some of the notes out. It's not like the C major scale or a major scale in general where you're giving everything away, right? So here's how to play it, guys. Grab your guitars. So on your first finger on the fifth fret of the sixth string, your pinky, you want that stretched out on the eighth fret. You want jump down string, you want your first finger on the fifth fret. You want your third finger on the seventh fret. Same again, you want your first finger on the fifth fret. And you want your third finger on the seventh fret. That's the first octave. Good work. So continuing with our third finger on the seventh fret of the fourth string, that's our A note. Jump down and use your first finger on the fifth of the third string. Your third finger on the seventh. Drop down so where it changes slightly. You want your first finger on the fifth fret of the second string. And your pinky on the eighth fret of the second string. And your first finger for the final A note, right, on the fifth fret of the first string. So the first octave. And the second octave. So just by the nature of the scale, again, because it doesn't have every degree, it's not spelling out everything exactly, it has its own unique flavour, it's great to solo with because if you're just starting to solo, if you're just 
go up and down the scale, already it's going to have this interesting sound and it's going to sound great over the chord. Here's an example, then it's your guys turn right. simple, really nothing too fantastic or, you know, amazing going on there. But I was just playing up and down the scale and you guys can do that too. I wasn't jumping around too many notes, literally just up and down the scale because some notes left out. It sounds really interesting and more importantly, really musical guys. It's your turn, give it a go. example guys what we're doing is we are playing arpeggios now what that means is we're specifically targeting notes that are within that chord remember the C major chord the notes are C E and G right okay so now that you've got that burned into your memory right the notes that we're gonna play on the guitar are C E and G so what it means is you're exactly playing what's in the chords and what that does is, is again it has this effect it sort of makes your notes sort of meld well with what's going on in the background and you know sort of jump out a little bit so it's great so this is the third example and there's still one more example of soloing guys so grab your guitars I'm going to show you how to play these arpeggios right so what's really important guys is once you've learned that C major scale go back and try and work out exactly what are the note names that you're actually playing because that will that will help you so much when you're learning arpeggios. So I'm going to show you a few different arpeggio shapes. Firstly, have your second finger on the eighth fret of the sixth string. Again, that's our C note. We played that before, yeah. Except this time, skip all the other notes, drop down, and use your first finger on the seventh fret of the fifth string. So we've gone C to E. And then if you use your pinky on the tenth fret of the fifth string, that's your G note. So already that's three notes done. So there's your arpeggio. Another way to play it, okay, is you can start with your pinky on the 8th fret. You can come down with your 3rd finger on the 7th fret of the 5th string. So C and E so far. And you can come down with your 1st finger on the 5th fret of the 4th string. That's your G. So they sound the same, yeah? Slightly different tone there because they're different strings. But what's great is because you know those two different examples, right? It's easier to get other notes and other flavors as well as playing the arpeggio. Right, so it's just going to be up to you, but we will get into that in the next part, okay? So, now that you know that arpeggio, how you can finish it from that first shape, right? Jump down with your pinky and play the 10th fret on the 4th string. So that's another C. So C, E, G, C. Well done, guys, okay? If you wanted to play that with the second example, it would look like this. C, E, G, C. Well done, guys, okay? So now we're going to look at another shape. So this time you want your pinky there on the 10th fret of the 4th string, that's your C note. Then you want your 3rd finger on the ninth fret of the string below, so C, E. Then you want your 2nd finger on the 8th fret there, that's your G, on the 2nd string. Then you want your 2nd finger also on the 8th fret of the 1st string. shape that I'm going to show you guys, again, these are all movable shapes, right? So you want your second finger, again, back on that C note, which is the 10th fret of the 4th string. Then you want your first finger below it on the 9th fret of the 3rd string. And you want your pinky on the 12th fret. So you've got C, E, G. And if 
you have a look at it, it's exactly the same as the first shape. But you can start it from the sixth string. You can actually start it from the third fret and the fifth string too. Or you can start it from the fourth string. So that one shape goes. All those notes with that one shape, it's great to remember that shape, guys, okay? So now I'm going to show you just a nice little melody over that backing track, then it's your turn. step guys, well done for making this far and this is going to make your playing sound so much more interesting, it's going to be interesting for you to play, interesting for, you know, more interesting for people to listen to you, right? The final step, here's the C major scale, remember, C to C, no sharps or flats, right? But here's what we're going to do, we're going to play all of the sharps. So what that means guys is if you've got a C note, normally you would jump up two frets to the D in a C major scale, but what if you just play one fret up? So that's basically the idea. The idea is that before we were sort of shying away from using any sharps or flats because there's no sharps or flats, as you can see, in the major scale. But now we're going to try and use all these blue notes or these colored notes or these chromatic notes. So rather than sounding like an exercise or a scale, when you're soloing, adding in these colored notes or these blues notes, it just takes you up a level. To me, anyway, you guys might like the sound of the major scale. This is just another idea. So here's what I would do, guys, to learn these blue notes, right? All these colored notes. Is you already know the C major scale, right? So what I would say to myself when I'm playing the scale is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. I would say those notes, or I would say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what I would do then is I would purposely try and skip the note and then add in its blue note alternative, right? So C, D, E, F sharp instead of F, right? Like that scale there. Here are that sounds. Then, you know, once you've played another note, the fifth and the sixth, maybe try flat seventh, B flat instead of B right next to it. So all it is is I would take this scale and I would try frets that aren't written in that scale. So here's a quick example, guys, and grab your guitars and it'll be your turn, right? example just showing you adding in those blue notes does make things sound a little bit more interesting can make notes really just jump out 
that maybe your ear is not expecting to hear. Now, the main notes that I was focusing on there was the flat seventh, so that would be the B flat, right? I was focusing on the flat third, so the E flat, and I was also focusing on the flat sixth, which would be A flat. So that was giving us that sound, right? And I'll show you what those notes sound like. So the flat sixth, the flat third, flat seventh. So by themselves, they can sound, whoa, they can sound really different, but if you mix them in with other notes, they sound great. That's it guys, well done for making it to the end. So we learnt the C major, two octaves, we learnt the A minor pentatonic, and we learnt a few different shapes for the C major arpeggio, right? But all of those shapes that we played today, it's only a C major scale because we're starting on C with our second finger. If you move back a fret, you've got B major, okay? And if with the A minor pentatonic, it's only an A minor pentatonic because we're starting on an A note on the fifth fret. If you move it back two frets to the third, you've got the G minor pentatonic. So all those shapes are movable, guys. They go to the same with the arpeggios. So you've actually learned every major arpeggio, every major scale, and every minor pentatonic scale. Again, if nothing made sense, guys, and you're a little bit unsure of the theory, head to patdavidmusic.com. Remember, guys, try and use the major scale. Try and use the minor pentatonic. Try and use the arpeggios. Combine all three. Have fun, guys. See you again soon. Bye.